Hello, Troy Scouts. It's been far too long. Thank you for listening to another episode. It's been a minute. We're back to our weekly episode release schedule. Tori and I just got back from St. Petersburg, Florida. Thank you for all the love uh, that you showed to us. Uh, Thank you to everyone who came out. We had an incredible time. Um, I have a few more road dates here I wanted to announce before we get the show rolling today. Uh, I'm going to be in Southbury, Connecticut, February 10th. That's this Friday, depending on when you're listening to this. <clears throat> oh, that was gross. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to be at uh, and in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, March 9th um, at the Comedy Connection. Helium Comedy Club in Philly, March 21st. I'm going to be in Timonium, Maryland uh, at Magoobie's Comedy Club, March 30th. San Diego, April 4th at Mike Drop Comedy. Phoenix, Arizona at Stand Up Live, uh, April 6th. San Diego, April 4th. Phoenix, April 6th. I hope I said that right the first time. L.A. date coming soon. Um, I'm also going to be at Zany's in Chicago, uh, uh, May 9th and 10th. Tickets are uh, selling to that one. So if you live in the Chicago area, I would suggest grabbing them now. Um, And I'm going to be uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah on May 21st. Tickets to all of those are available in my link tree uh, if you click on my Instagram or go to linktree.com slash Troy Bond, they're going to be made available on my website very soon, as soon as the website drops too. I wanted to get those out of the way before we started the show. Thank you for tuning in again. Uh, this episode is just uh, me and Tori back to basics, um, and we have a lot more fun episodes planned for you coming up. Uh, I enjoy this one. It's a classic uh, to- Tori and Troy adventure. Jesus, Morty, you, you can't do that impression anymore. Just start, start the goddamn podcast. Jesus Christ. Yeah, if you could get a DM from any celebrity, who would it be? To, oh, for, like a, a flirty question. DM. Is there? Do you have? I feel like you never talk about any celebrity crushes. Do you have any? I always. I mean, I've always said. Do you want me to move this? That you look uncomfortable. No, I. I liked it, and she moved it anyway. No, I don't think you wanted that. I did want it. But it's <laughs> you okay. want it under your butt. I liked it when I said I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Words is wrong. But now Up you're is deeper down. in the couch. That's yeah. better, right? Deeper is nice. I. This. Uh. That's, okay. This feels uh, wrong. <laughs> Put into people's ears. <laughs> okay, okay. No, but really, a deep couch is where it's at. Okay, so if I could yes, have... Yes, Mr. Cosby. Any DM. <laughs> well, back to my celebrity crushes. I've always said um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Right. Uh, what he, what started that? Now. Was it Third Rock from the Sun? Was it uh, 500 Days of um, Summer? Don John? He's in uh, 10 Things Joseph. I Hate About You. The one he's like a little wrong. boy in that. But um, Is that the Amanda Bynes one? No, that's um, Julia... What's her name? Roberts? No. Louis Dreyfus? I feel like I just made up a name. Julia? Style. Yeah, Julia fake. Style? Is that a name? That sounds made up. I don't well, know. Heath, Could Ledger. Be. I, I, Heath Ledger and whatever. Uh, whatever. It's a classic. Do you want to know what I hate about you? I'm trying to think of one I really felt Number 10, I just like his squinty you eyes. You snore too loud. Number and nine, I love Channing Tatum. I hate I think, all your um, friends. That now that's a magic, magic mic right there, Batman. Yeah, I love him so much. Uh, those are my two. Yeah. Channing Tatum and... Oh, Step Up. That's when I fell in love with Channing Tatum. Step Up, the first one. Was that the one Chris Brown died in? Hmm. No, wait. No, 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 no. He wasn't even in that movie. <laughs> but I know what you're talking about. There was a character like Chris Brown like, that does There was a parking lot scene His where name's he like like danced or shorty and then or something. he got shot. Yeah, right? shorty. He got shot after a parking lot dance battle. Yeah. It, yes, yeah. That, that happened. Is that Step Up one or two? I think one. But yeah, I don't know why I remember that, <clears throat> but that's all I remember from that well, movie. Well, it was really sad. It was the first time I ever saw dancing. And then the mom was sad because they were supposed to be watching. It was a whole thing. Did the well? Oh. So if I could have any d- like DM from a it celebrity, would be the guy who got shot and step up. I guess him. it'd have to be Channing Tatum, but that feels Channing like Tatum. a you're like wacky a crazy like that. Reach. I guess he's not conventionally attractive. He is. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you're being sarcastic. Welcome back to bonding. <laughs> I'm your host, Country Troy, and this is my co-host, Cousin Tori, coming hey, back from the South, Gator, cuz, 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 Gator Country, let's give him a little Gator justice. Shout out, St. Pete. We had a great time in St. Pete. Thank you, everybody, for the love. Thank you to so Zach fun. Moore, to uh, Coastal Creative, to Dan, to um, uh, Gimmick Comedy Gimmick. House, Sean, that dude was crazy energy. Is that his name? I'm making that up. I don't remember. I you're doing great at making up names today. Um, 
we had a great time down so in St. Pete. First time being on the road like that? Yeah, that was my first one. Road well, gig. What did you think? I loved every second of it. It was so fun. It was a great time. It we was so fun. Got to Tories at like, well, I got to Tories at like 1030. Joey got here shortly after. We took an edible. Uh, 170 he, milligrams of an edible. Claims Let me he just got, put yeah, that out there. It was. It was like one. Of, it was a Homer Simpson donut. If I ate it, I would have died. The guys at the weed store recognized me. And oh, I God. went. I was off camera burp. That was off. I mean, off mic, off mic, off mic. I hope I picked it up. Um, <laughs> so he recognized me when I was leaving my apartment and uh, and going to Tories, and he was like, "Hey, dude, you're a comedian, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And usually, what happens after that is like, I saw a video of you telling a woman to shut the fuck up, and I'm like, "Yeah, thanks, man." And they're like, "Yeah, you beat that bitch down," and I'm like, "Okay, all right." Inside voices, there's <laughs> people watching. Um, and then like I take a picture with them after, and I just look like um Andrew. You Tate. did take a photo. Uh, Can I see it? No, not with this guy. He gave me. Th- he was oh. one who was like, "Where are you going?" And I was like, "I'm going on the road." And he was like, "Oh, I got some great edibles for you." Yeah, sorry, I didn't click the white light. <laughs> I just I typed white light in, but I didn't click it. Well, there I like we go. That it was like kind of there, you know. Yeah, like, maybe he didn't want little, that much white light. Uh, he gave <laughs> me um an edible, and uh, I took it, gave Joey a little piece. I actually do think he was like you kind think- of being a bitch, saying he got all the weed parts. I think he did. But I took one last night, and I was not well for like a good thirty minutes, and I never liked that. Uh, I was watching The Last of Us. And I was baked, and that was just a bad combination of shit. I went to McDonald's. I got a, I got a Big the one Mac. Right here? Yeah, I got a Big Mac. I got two McDoubles and fries, and I ate most of it on my way back to the house. I do that. I sat down, and then I went downstairs and got two bags of chips and a candy bar. After that, the diabetes wow. is coming this week. You were I ate your like best a life. dog in Florida. I had an All Star Special <laughs> at Waffle House. Honestly, can I just say that I think the All Star Special was amazing, but I could have eaten two of those. Really? I didn't yeah. even finish my waffle. I I could have done two of those. That's great. There was a lot of people talking about how they were happy to see you eat regularly. I, know, I saw that. I didn't know your habits were so out there like that. I didn't know I was known as a non-eater. Well, it was the first time in a year I saw you eat. Happy year anniversary of podcast, by oh the way. Oh my God, it's our one this year. Is, I think we passed it while we, we were did. in Florida. But this February is, 2nd. We'll, we'll consider this a year of podcasting You together. didn't ask me to be your co your, mm stroke your host until february like 20th or oh something God, that <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. that's probably our number one used word on this podcast stroke stroke i'll be stroking oh, to the stroke heat. and that's stroking. good i think you should put a montage together of, of me strokes. saying stroke It'll and give that's people good a stroke um, um but it's been a year happy yeah. year what a great way to spend that year down in st yeah. pete we got some incredible gifts you want to talk about that should i get my hat do you want to? Uh, no, it's no. no okay. It doesn't matter. People saw us in the hat. They sure did. Someone, I think, uh. I think they brought it for me just to make me feel better. But that was really a gift for you. They were so they loved you. The shout out boys, to Hunter, Hunter, Austin, and Christian. Austin and Christian, shout out. We love. They you. came to the show Friday night, mm-hmm. um, and we talked for a little bit, and they were like, "We're coming back tomorrow," and I was like, "You do not have to do that." <laughs> <laughs> I always encourage people to not. I mean. It hurts me financially when I tell people not to come back a second time. But I tell them all the time, hey, you don't have to do that. You have a PlayStation. You have a girlfriend. You could do that tomorrow. Um, but they came back uh, to the Saturday show and they saw us in the parking lot before we even yeah. just timed out that they they may have been waiting there for us. I don't, they were across the street at like a bar or something. Yeah. So that but they came me, running across the street. They came running us. across the street towards us on a gator. <laughs> Uh, and they were like, we got something for you. And I was like, don't shoot. And uh, they they gave, they pulled out these two cow. We have it on video. I'll show, you'll see it on yeah, YouTube yeah. when I post a video. Um, we got a lot of video of the Florida trip, too. But they gave us these really cool cowboy hats. I've always really wanted nice a cowboy ones. hat. Really? Yeah. But I mean, like, I love Red Dead Redemption. Oh, right. So that's I went home and I played it a little last night wearing the hat. It felt good. I killed some Klansmen wearing the hat. They signed it for us. I always got a piece of uh, Sumter, Florida down Sumter. with me. There's so many friendly people outside of New York. Like, like there and was inside. like people, that guy, when we were leaving Walmart or Best Buy, he was like, oh, yeah. y'all have a good day. You hear? And I was like, what'd you say about my mother, you piece <laughs> of shit? Uh, I just love the... The hospitality down there. Everybody was friendly so to us. Nice. Even the homeless people were nice to me. This homeless dude came up to me and he was like, hey, man, 
you okay? And I was like, what? And he was like, God told me to ask you if you were okay. And that bothered me so much. Why? Because, I mean, I don't even believe in God, but he had me thinking, what if he was right? What if God did? God how am I going to know? Pulse check. I feel like people who say God talked to them truly believe it. They yeah. They truly believe God was talking to them. Because you could see anything you want to in life. You're, you control your own perception. Right. Like, you could take those flowers dying right now as a sign of being like, well, I guess that shows me I can never have kids because I'm not going to take care of them. See, now or, here's my mind. I'm like, what if Troy's telling me this because maybe I'm infertile? <laughs> That was uh, <laughs> how would I know that? The universe sent you that. <laughs> the universe <laughs> told me you're barren. Why would you choose that of all things? God told me that flowers? you should look up some adoption options. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I'm just saying, people could choose to believe what right, they want to believe. Could, right. Yeah, and I, I'm and for, you I'm could doubling choose down on your me telling you this that you're infertile. Yeah. But listen, something's different in the air, and your eggs are scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> your childbearing years are not going to be over easy. You're going to have to take them and adopt a child eggs Benedict. <laughs> so to get one last one in there, I couldn't get any more uh, egg puns out. There's a few more, I'm sure. There, you I'm say sure. Poached. Yeah, I filled, filled, put poached. I know because I'm walking on eggshells here. All I'll right, have to poach a child. <laughs> I'm going to have to human traffic this kid. <laughs> Grand slam. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> I forgot what... Oh, the, the friendliness of people down the south. The homeless man. so nice. Homeless man. The people gave us a hat. I, like I got the, the Black Panther necklace. We danced. Um, and I got my mala beads. I got uh, a, a whole bunch of people from my hometown were there. I met cousins that I didn't know I had. They were heckling so me. Florida, or, or they weren't heckling during this. My mom like messaged me like three weeks ago being like, you're cousins that you've never met like... 10 times i think uh, me and her me and one of my cousins we have the same you made out my great yes <laughs> we were in florida Just one, it was one time it's a family reunion um her aunt is my great grandmother um who's still alive shout out nana only grandma i got mm -hmm. left great grandma anyway they were at the show and they were like because there was a side section and, um, behind us. Behind us. Uh, well, on the, the side VIP of us. look at our asses. Yeah, someone's got to do it. That's VIP, am I right? That's VIP. <laughs> they looked at my ass, and uh, they looked at three other bookshelves. Um, but uh, bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> they were sitting behind me, <laughs> and I heard them talking. And I turned to the one woman, and I called her a lipless demon. And then the person next to her was like, "Where are your cousins?" And I was like, "Oh, that's I'm sorry." <laughs> Uh, thank you for coming. And then uh, we met, uh, and it was great to meet them. It's always cool to meet family at a comedy show. We have people from who, I don't think that they, I think they lived in my hometown in Naugatuck, but they're down in Florida now. They came, they brought me a shirt. There were so oh, many yeah, gifts. You, I got so many. matching shirts. We all had matching shirts on. They, I, it's photo. so nice. It just feels like a, I'm, it feels like a robbery every time I do road work because <laughs> yeah. I go down, I get to get paid, I get to perform, I get to meet all these people who I would never meet uh, anywhere else uh, and they paid to see me and they bring me these gifts and then I take pictures and then I'm like, all right, I'll see you later. <laughs> On to the next one. Boink, 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 boink. And there's alarm bells playing and I'm walking away from a car as it exploded. It really feels like that. <laughs> it's it's just so... And on the flight back, there was a woman who... Uh, when attendant? she was taking my... Yeah, the flight there <laughs> was very different from the flight back. Um, <laughs> the flight there, they were pissed. They hated us. We get on the plane like and they're the like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Uh, sorry for the delay. We were waiting because we Have had no some problems with the water. We are absolutely mm -hmm. no water. If you are dehydrated, you will die before this plane lands. Uh, we thought it was a problem with the frozen pipes, but it wasn't. Okay, we're taking <laughs> off now. <laughs> like, which made me immediately think, the pipes are frozen. Uh, and then we're taking off. They're pissed. They're like, there's no coffee. There's no water. If you're thirsty, go fuck yourself. And then uh, when we're done getting the snacks and everything, they're coming back to collect the garbage. But it felt like they were. she was just like, garbage, 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 trash, 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 <laughs> piece of shit, piece of shit, <laughs> piece of shit. If there's a crash landing, we're going to use your body as a floaty, bitch. And then we landed and they're like, welcome to Florida. I hope you die. Uh, and then on the way back, crew was much nicer they and this smiled. woman was picking up my garbage and she was like i was like thank you and she was like you welcome mr bond and i was like what 
And she was like, I follow you on Instagram. And I was like, oh, thank you very much. Uh, and she she came back. Because, you know, if people say that to me, I get into the Michael Jackson voice. I'm like, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'll follow you back. Oh, I can't because we're in the air I right now. I don't know who you are and I'm not going to ask. No, her name was... Uh, well, I don't know if I should say her name. Oh, she, really? Yeah. Well, shout out to Esther. Yeah. Esther. I you, mean, what are they going to go find her? Yeah. I mean... I don't know. We literally posted our exact location. Esther was. So, we lived, <laughs> I know. So. And we lived. Um, speaking of which, today's <laughs> so episode is Esther. taped at. Uh, no. Yeah. She, yeah. she um, <laughs> Esther was so sweet to me. She came up to me after. And she was like, can I get you drinks or anything else? And I was like, thank you, Esther. You're the best. You're the bester. Um, <laughs> and then uh, uh, we we what else did we do down there? We had uh, we had seafood. Yeah, yeah, I forced you to eat seafood. You we, I had shrimp. I had shrimp. I had peeled shrimp. You liked your we shrimp. We had some peeled shrimp at Mullet's Mullet's Fish Camp. Mullet's Shout Fish out Camp. Mullet's Fish Camp. It great, great spot in St. Pete. It was a great spot. All the buoys, great I, spot. I hate outdoor dining in what? New York. Oh, it's so horrible. Because I'm just like, why do I want to sit next to ten feet of trash and, and uh, you know I could just go eat with the raccoons? <laughs> in Florida. It, it was nice. so nice just to be outside, you know, and just feel the sun. We got to escape the cold. Yeah, it was 14 degrees here. Yeah. So sorry to anyone that endured that. We got back and it was back to 45. Got back to 45. Um, so. At the top of the show, I announced some of the show dates. Well, I recorded them pre and I put them in later. So you don't even know. But I got a lot of more road dates miss? coming up. Um, we you already know them? No, they're gonna they they're gonna play at the top of the show. I pre-recorded them. Oh, alone? Yeah. Without me? All by myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we had a great time, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to to some more road shows this uh, this year. Thank you again, Florida Coastal Thank Creative. Thank you to Joey. Thank you, Tori. Thank you to Zach Moore, Dan, everyone that uh, everyone that came out. Thank you for and the Troy Scouts. Thank and you for the great Boys. shows. Yes. It took me two years to come up with a name, and you got one in a weekend. Well, was Troy Scouts took you two years to figure that one out? Or I thought that just got locked in. Or yeah, is that not it? It took me two years to come up with one. Oh. Well, th- Toy Boys might also be a little bit too... Like, I feel like that's not... I guess everyone could be a boy in today's world. We're all something. Sure, I'm going to stick with that. Okay. That's a... I think I heard Neil deGrasse Tyson say that. We're, We're all, all something. Something. I like boys for girls. You can be a toy boy as a toy girl. That sounds like a... Boys for girls. Trade in your boys. Get a girl. This business is not supported by J.K. Rowling. People are pissed at her. Uh, They're they're not playing that Harry Potter game right now. Why? uh, Because she's all anti-trans people. Really? Super anti-trans. I didn't know that. I think it's so funny that she's like, it doesn't make sense that a woman could have a penis and like you wrote Harry Potter. You use your imagination, J.K. I know it's there. I didn't know that. J.K. Did I say? Did I call her J.K. Simmons or J.K. Rowling? Rowling. It's weird that there's two. I like that you said J.K. J.K. She can't fit. Yeah, she's <clears> a big. They call. I don't know what turf stands for, but she's a turf. Turf is like an anti-trans. Uh, like, does she thing. like preach it or? She yeah. Says it's clear that does not stop talking about it. Oh. Makes no sense to me. It's weird when people go that. Far That'd into be really being a sad bigot. If you yeah. were trans and you loved Harry Potter. And you're Potter. a huge Harry Potter fan. What like, would that do to you? Crush you. That's why so many of these people are heartbroken. And like she gets so much money off of the yeah. game. And I don't really care about the franchise one way or another. Did you but read I the books? care about human rights. I did not read I read up to the sixth one. Okay. And so then I stole did. the That's sixth one from my dad. My dad read them all. He used to take us opening day to the movies and then he would take us to the bookstore when the books would come out. I've ne- it's like the first time in my life I ever saw like a line for books, a books like yeah. outside of Barnes and Noble. And we that always doesn't happen anymore. I'm guessing not really because everybody That's, can just eat yeah. download it. But uh, yeah, so it's kind of crazy that was a thing in our lifetime. It's so crazy, Back and in it's my a day, it's a core member. We used to wait outside for the these books. wizardry books, <laughs> um, but there'd be protesters out there that we had a so much fun watching too why like all Back these religious protesters oh, against harry inside, potter yeah it was black magic and satanic and whatever the fuck that's funny they believe that a man People need in to the get a sky life. created man and uh they, like they must have no life no, their life is God. They gave it up to the church and to the Lord because <sighs> they're stupid people with a narrow worldview that uh, feel like the only way they're going to save humanity is by being a dick to everybody who's in it. 
I guess don't feel think like Jesus would love purpose. that? Yeah, because they have none. Um, anyway, yeah, my dad, uh, uh, let me, he would take us to the stores. I read them all up to the sixth one. I think that was the Half-Blood Prince, and then I took it from him without permission. We had it in the closet, and he went in our room looking for it one night, just throwing uh, shit around, and I like woke up, and I was like, what the fuck's going on? And he threw, it was at the top of the closet shelf, and he threw it, and it hit me in the jaw. That's why my bottom teeth are still kind of really? crooked to this day. That's from the book? Passed out immediately. Hit me in the jaw. I passed out and like hit the back of my head on the, on the, we had bunk beds. And I woke up to like him rinsing my mouth under the sink and my brother like shoving a popsicle down my throat. It felt like I was getting like skull fucked by Mr. Freeze and Guantanamo Jesus, Bay. that is intense. And then my dad was nice to me for the whole rest of the summer. I developed Good. an addiction to Advil PM that summer too. I was like How 12. How old you? That sounds And I would bad. take, Ad- I'd be in so much pain. I would just take Advil PM. During so the I could day just go or at night? Sleep. Both. Okay. I was taking like three or four. It's amazing that you are as like, there as you are <laughs> what i mean <laughs> like that's all... like when your brain is developing and you're just like yeah doing that. it probably still is it's kind of amazing imagine i feel like if you like were fed like a seaweed type diet like that kid you joke about mm. like all everything good not the seaweed stuff maybe some protein in there but like i feel like you'd probably be the same actually it's like it makes me not want to even bother with eating healthy you're living proof that you're fine. Well, <laughs> it's everything in moderation, you know? I wouldn't say I'm fine either. <laughs> you go through cycles. It's like waves you're at the beach, good. you know? It comes and then it goes. There's days where you're wet and there's days where you're dry. Is it because all those Pop-Tarts? Is that when, you get, when you're sad, you're like, it's the fucking Pop-Tart. What? What Pop-Tart? Or just that's like a bad diet that you eat as a kid. Oh. Did you eat Pop-Tarts as a kid? Yeah. I did too. I'm S'mores just saying. and strawberry. Those are your favorites. Those are my two, f- and the cookies and cream. Cookies Those one in the toaster. There was Ooh. a cookie dough one it's like too. Little cum all the over cinnamon my lips. one was my go-to. Cin- brown sugar cinnamon. Yeah, that was a good one. That, you you, those ones them? you could eat cold. Oh, uh, uh, any chance I could. Yeah. We toast them. I loved them. I actually was watching a Jay Shetty podcast, and they had this health guy on, and he said that pop tarts spike your blood sugar so much that it actually changes the shape of your frontal lobe, and it really fucks kids up. Yeah, I but mean, I ate a lot of those. So my parents i don't think we're too focused on our diet because we were working out every single day at karate i mean like we were working out like six hours a day wow teaching uh i mean we weren't lazy kids yeah we they i mean we're also poor family it's really hard to eat poor when you eat healthy when you're poor we weren't like you know gluttonous slobs either like i remember i was having a pretty balanced diet and i always loved vegetables and Mm. fruit like i would eat i still do tomatoes whole Really? Like an yeah. apple? Yeah. Any chance can I can. Can you put that on film? Yeah, I have before. Put that on the film. Put that on the reel. <laughs> Roll it up, Mr. Squasese. You, you have filmed that before and shared it's it? It's on my Instagram I feel like it would just somewhere. be a juicy mess. It is. You got to bite and suck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now you really should put that out yeah, there. Yeah, I The have. ladies would love it. I'm getting, <laughs> hey, if they're thirsting over 7-Eleven chicken, imagine just w- how much tomato. they're going to be leaking out of their tomato. Didn't tell. Now they're definitely not going to. All those, all that just dried no, up. I still need to see <laughs> it. Not for me, but I yeah, actually am just more so like intrigued. By the tomato. I'm just uh, intrigued. Technique. I want to clarify I love cold how vegetables. I feel. <laughs> Broccoli, I love eating cold. Carrots, I love eating cold. Cauliflower. Question though is, yes. do you like it raw and cold or cooked and cold? Well, if it's cooked, it wouldn't be. I mean, you could, could sit it at, you could way. cook it and I could sit and be cold. If it's cooked, I'd prefer to eat it cooked, Hot, okay. charred. But you I like, like it black. Raw, like when you dip it in ranch, or you could just yeah. Eat, okay. Ranch is a problem for me. I gotta stop. I Hidden eat a Valley, lot of ranch. What's your go-to Hidden brand? Valley. Yeah, I ate some airport ranch yesterday. I love it was ranch. not great. Me too. Is that your favorite sauce? I'd say it's prop. Yeah, it, it's very basic of me to say, but yeah, that and any kind of You're hot sauce. I would travel with hot sauce if I if I trusted what myself. What about spicy ranch? Nah, I'd rather put hot sauce in, in the ranch. I don't want. I like ice cream. I like steak. I don't want ice cream on my steak. You know, ranch just stick. I with love the when basic. you make polarizing statements for me to understand. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I call it the Tory Cole breakdown. Like, oh, I get it. Welcome now. to Cole's consciousness. No steak and ice cream. <laughs> no steak and hey, if you hey for for this Christmas, know what not to get me. 
Your birthday's coming up. March 2nd. You're going to be dirty 30. 30, 30. That's so exciting you're turning 30. Uh, (laughs) All my friends are turning 30 this year. That's great. (laughs) You seem really genuine about that. I am excited about that. I'm excited when uh, friends that I've known in my 20s cross the, the rainbow bridge. What's on the other side? I don't know. I'm, I'm three years away from it. You're You'll not have that to let much me know. Me. Menopause. That's what's yeah. on the other side for you. That's what's going and back to me, my it's rotting eggs. Dysfunction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all have something to not look forward to past yeah. 30. On the other side is It's IDF. all uphill from here, <laughs> which is horrible. <laughs> Nobody wants to walk up a hill. I actually saw on a Jay Shetty podcast. Oh, my God. What did you see on a Jay said Shetty the, podcast? The worst years of your life are 30 to 40, which seems horrible. Yeah, that sounds about right. If I have to listen to you talk about Jay Shetty for the next I won't three years, then the 20s again. were the worst years of my life. I won't ever say his name again. But if someone said that. But then a lot of people say your 30s are your best. So I don't know. I've, I've heard a lot of conflicting things. People say high school are the best years I of your life. I loved high it's school. It's all subjective. I mean, I did a lot of cocaine. I sure hope I didn't peak in high school, though. Be so I don't think sad. Peaking is a state of mind, Craig. You're right. It's easy to think that. I think people who think they peaked in high school are, are a people that don't ever want to say it out loud. So the fact that you say that out loud tells you that I you're didn't not. Say it's it. like saying you're a sociopath. I said I enjoyed it. I know. It. It's like being worried that you're you're a sociopath. You know, if you really were one, you, would you wouldn't know? be worried about it. Yeah. Oh, got people it. People who peak in it in high school don't realize that they did, or maybe they did, and that's why they make it everyone else's problem. But it's um, a good insight. Yeah, I mean, thank you. You 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 peak when you decide. You decide you've peaked. I think you you peak when you've given up on reinventing yourself or trying anything new. I see. Okay. You know, like I'm always trying to think like something new I could do to can, to build off the back <coughs> of what I know what works. That's a good point. It's a lot of trial and error, and you never know. But people respect you for taking risks. I think, and people grow with you when you grow yourself. I'm talking in like a very public way the way i do it right no same i think anytime you put anything out there you're being very vulnerable in a way yeah and like there's you know what's crazy is like a woman uh, messaged me the other day um and she's like i have followed you since the day your late night with jimmy fallon episode appeared which was july 22nd 2013 um and 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 she's followed me for 10 years now wow the last 10 years of my life and she was like i can't tell you how proud i am of you and i was like that was so cool just to think like someone really was there at the beginning and then yet like that whole time and like when i started and i've always followed them too and like i remember like when they were getting into makeup and now like they they are uh, like a makeup influencer and Uh so it's cool like seeing that back and forth and you grow you you grow with people when you don't even realize it you know like uh and and that's that's all part of being effortless which was your book that i looked up after did you i looked it up yeah i was trying to see if there was an audio book of it wow i wanted to see did you find one i don't remember it's really a good book it's an easy read too i can give it to you when i'm done i can't commit to reading a book right now i could listen to the fuck out of one okay but like sitting you read quick i i do i read even quicker if it's an audio book well you're not reading I'm reading with my ears. <laughs> it's funny. That's how you get hearing aids. I'm going to change this battery real okay. quick. Uh, trans people <laughs> are welcome at the Bonding Podcast. Sorry. Yes. All people are welcome. Everyone. Except people who are transphobes. They're weaponizing that shit right now. Again, homophobia. They're weaponizing it? Yeah. There's way more police officers and pastors and... and, and, and uh, figureheads that the right wing idolizes that are groomers than drag queens and whoever they try to boogeyman that's what their big thing is you know drag queens are all groomers and da 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 but they're always pretty quiet when uh, one of their own gets uh, uh, caught down in in yeah I've lost you completely haven't I <laughs> I saw I'm you go listening. dead behind the eyes like three no, times <laughs> Trump just said that he was going to when he was going to put people in jail if he becomes president again. He was going to put people in jail if they did any gender affirming care. 
on uh, gender children. affirming it's care. It's like when they, they give, you know, testosterone or estrogen treatments. Before or, 18, or when is it? Because didn't they make it a law where you have to be 18? Uh, no, you could take puberty blockers and oh. <coughs> got it and other things. But, uh, you know, there's the, the, the numbers and the stats that they make up are just completely false and boogeyman y. And there's nothing that those people are better at than creating supervillains. Like, I remember in 2021, their big thing was uh, Dr. Seuss. And, oh, and, yeah. Um, for a while it was so sad it's just, all of it is i just don't understand i mean i do understand i do understand because it's a false uh empty ideology that tells everybody that they're the party of the working class and pulling yourselves up by the bootstraps when in all reality they are the party that actively fights against minimum wage the fi- party that fights against workers rights and uh the the party that's all about corporate interests and sucking the cocks at the coke brothers and other figureheads that put all their money behind their hateful lobbying and ideology so they can keep killing the planet god damn it and I'm tired of it. If I don't have any uh, success with my career in the next two years, I'm gonna run. I think you're you're gonna have a lot of success. So, but I'm glad. <laughs> all my hair is on your face. I know it's increasingly <laughs> happened this whole I, episode. I, I was I like, wow, that's a long one, but it lot. just keeps <laughs> happening. You're just shedding. You could never murder, man. Uh, no, I could not. Just um, leave it all over the yeah. place. It's kind of concerning. It's probably getting older. I'm just going I almost just was going to say excuse me to that plant. <laughs> I feel like it's gotten closer to us <laughs> since we've been sitting here. It's got something to say. It does. He's like, may I offer my <laughs> photosynthesis? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why your plant talks like that. Here I am, I like feet voice. planted, I'm listening to this podcast. Alive. How long have you had it? Since I moved in in July. You've been here since July. Yeah. You're going to stay here another July? I hope so. Me too. If they raise my rent, it'd be a real bummer. This but is a good spot for you. I love this place. It is I'm me. I'm down here now too. This is my cocoon. Cocoon. Yeah. It's very chrysalis. Yeah. It's where I become a butterfly. That happens I'm outside. a beautiful butterfly. You, you know the fat, the fat caterpillar in uh, Bug's Life? Yeah. I thought <laughs> you, were, you were talking about the Eric Carl book and I was like, that's not the name of the book. It's the very hungry caterpillar. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> love that, that book. That, that obese piece of shit no, caterpillar. No, I grew up with that book, and me that too. is another book that I really re- like resonates with me. The very hungry caterpillar. Why hungry, does he? Hungry. Why does that resonate with you? Because he was so hungry, he kept eating things. Yeah, that was me last night watching The Last of Us. I was just like another burger. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Lays. Nom, 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 I like that you nom, ate nom. it on your way home. I whenever I go to the grocery store, I buy something that I could eat on the way home. Yeah, that's that's it's like my favorite thing to do. I'm like, what is my road snack? You've got <laughs> <laughs> do you walk to to Trader yeah. Joe's? It's like a five minute walk, but I I have to eat something as soon. Like I'll like I be like on the say. escalator out opening food. <laughs> Ma'am, you have to pay for that. <laughs> it's a whole cake. <laughs> yeah, I try to. I I ate. Uh, I uh, that's what the fries are for. That's true. The fries c- stay seasoned and hot in the bag. And you take them out and they're like, this world is cold. (laughs) And they just flop. They go from crisp fry. They were in the academy for over seven minutes. They went from frozen to soggy to firm again. Then they're pulled out of the oil and they dry. Then they stand under the lamp at attention, ready to serve. And you put them in the bag and they're with the troops. They're with the boys. One by one, they get picked out of the bag and they go, oh, it's going to be my turn to serve. But. But they not serve. all the fries go out immediately. Some have to wait, and they sog, and they sap. Every minute in our lives is 10 years for a fry, small, medium, or large. Have you ever found, found a fry the next day that you like missed, and it's like rock solid? doesn't always taste as good. And I don't eat them, but I found them <laughs> like, in Neither. my purse and stuff, and I'm like, your purse. this is rock solid. Like, two it's fries kind of- in my ass. What the <laughs> hell did I do last night? <laughs> I literally found <laughs> fries in my first ones, and they were hard as a rock. Stop calling Grimace after 2 a.m. You know when you analyze food, and you're like, this was in this is in my body. And it's just in such a weird form. They're like, this shouldn't be consumed. I feel that way every time I eat McDonald's. I'm like, why am I doing this? Mm. <laughs> I feel that way when I drink sometimes, too. Like, I can feel it poisoning me. Yeah. Like, like what makes you drunk? Like, it's just yeah. all the sugar, right? Uh, the alcohol the ethanol the ethanol yeah you just put that right into you and you're like oh that's not good 
Might as well keep drinking so <laughs> I don't thinking about it. It is crazy. The more I've learned about alcohol, it really is poison. Yeah, I still smoke every day, so like that's probably not good that's either. That's healthy. Yeah. I guess fine. My grand, my mom is so funny about quitting smoking because she's like, she because she won't quit. She's had like a mini like stroke. Weed or like cigarettes. tobacco. She, okay, she doesn't smoke weed. Um, but she's so funny about it because uh, like she's she's had some health problems and, and whatever. And you know, the big thing they always come for is smoking. Every time at you're sick, whenever they're gonna come for you. If you go to the doctor for a broken toe, they're like, oh, you should probably cut out cigarettes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so like. But like so smoking is a source of a lot of her health problems. And I'm I'm looking at that going, eh, I got 20 years. But she will be like, uh, well, your grandmother smoked until she was 74. And then she died when she was 76. And I was like that. I don't know if that is why she died, mom. I think she died because she was 76. 76 is not that old. Uh, not as much anymore. But like for 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 black people, it, it is. Wow. Oh. Like she, she worked her whole life and smoked and used to be a big drinker and quit. She quit she was drinking? like a huge alcoholic. Yeah. How According long to was she dad. sober for? Um, Till the day she died. Then I brought her a six pack and I was like, let's chill, grandma. No, no, don't look at me like that. God, I was 13. No, I was 17 when I she mean, died. I mean, if I was, I, she was so, I never saw anyways. her have a drink. I think she's been sober since the 80s. Wow. Yeah. Never saw her have a drink. I wonder what her last drink was. Um, that's a good question. Or like, well, what was the day that she woke up and was like, "I'm not doing this anymore"? Like my I, dad, he went sober recently. Did I tell you that? No, I yeah. didn't know he was a drinker. He was, and uh, not really growing up, it was never like in my face or anything. But uh, he definitely drank a lot. Like, remember when I was showing you those Marvin Gaye screenshots of Spotify, and he was like, "Oh, it's good music." Like, he would do stuff like that where he would, like, right. drunk text me. <laughs> right, 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 right. And so I noticed it, and then uh, he got some bad blood work back, and he was like, and it's funny, because I was telling him oh, I stopped drinking, and he's like, it's good for you. It's too late for me. And he said those exact words. He's like, "It's. I think it makes sense for you to do, but I'm past it. And he's, like, 63, and it's like, okay. <laughs> but uh, it's funny to hear his, cha- his tune change. He got some bad blood work back, and he was like, oh, I got to stop. And he, now he, he's done he says he's done for life which is very interesting so we'll how long see. has he been not drinking uh, it's been like two months now wow yeah and he keep he sends me like screenshots he like bonded over it uh, he wrote a blog post about it he has a blog as well that's crazy i didn't yeah. know that yeah yeah he wrote all about the first time he drank alcohol and then when i wrote mine about drinking i wrote about my first time drinking alcohol and it was kind of cute it like inspired me and it was cool to hear it's like here's someone that i've known my entire life i didn't know that story at all and it's just yeah cool to learn that about him and his experience it's interesting hearing stories <laughs> like that um you just said like what uh you, I've, I've known my dad my whole <laughs> life never heard that story <laughs> like my dad a couple of weeks ago i had a similar uh thing where he was telling, he was in the middle of like, and like that that time I told you about like da 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 da. And I was like, you never told me that. And then like, and hear him getting excited, being like, oh, I never told you this story. Well, and like it was, I am sitting there being like, I can't believe I never heard this. And I know he's like on the other end being like, I I can't believe I never told him this. And it always makes me. It's a, just a constant reminder of like, oh, there's still so much I don't know in about life and the world including about my own, my own family father, yeah. and my own father. Yeah. yeah. I'm like so close to the source. Not that like I walk around arrogant thinking I know everything, but I think some, <laughs> there's like a level of, I, I, I don't know if this is arrogance. It's either arrogance or ignorance, but like sometimes I feel like I, I have a comfort level of knowledge where I'm just like, I don't really want to learn anything else yeah. today. And that's always, is I'm very, I'm a really curious person. Um, but I'm a bad student. But once I learned that I was curious and and, I, and that I was a bad student, because I used to just think I was really dumb. Well, you want to know about things that you're interested in. And that's when you're absorbing the most, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, but it also, I had to learn that too. Right. I just thought that like I was so far behind everybody else yeah. in school that like I was like, I'm just not going to catch up. I might as well learn how to perform for them because I don't have to be that smart to do that. But it turns out I just uh, had bad teachers and some really good ones too. 
I feel was, that. I was so bad at math. I used to cry and think I was stupid. My dad's going to school right now, and he's having a hard time with math. And I'm math using it so as a way hard. to just sort of get back at him for any time he yelled at me about my grades. <laughs> where he's like, I, I really am having a hard time understanding this. And I'm like, because you're not following the directions. That's why. <laughs> He's like, I got a I 75 on my math test. And I'm like, that's the best you could do, huh? <laughs> I'm never going to yell at you for your grades, but I'm just a little disappointed. In that's you. so good. You should make that a joke. Oh, it's real life. I'm going to keep tormenting All him until right. I get a laugh. Back to your point, though, about how you're still like learning things and you feel like obviously you don't know everything, but sometimes you get comfortable with a certain set point. Mm-hmm. I think with my sobriety in this, you might relate to this in some way. It's like I'm learning, I'm getting to know myself all the time and learning who I am. And like, you guys spend a I, lot of time with you. Yeah. And so I feel like to your point, it's like you're still learning about your dad. It's like, I feel like you're even learning about yourself every day. And that's what's like the oh, part yeah. about like getting older. And It's the scary part about getting older, honestly, because like I learned something about my dad and I'm like, oh, I totally understand where he's coming from. I do that sometimes. And I'm like, fuck, I do that sometimes. <laughs> like what? I mean, I don't want to get into specifics, but like there's just stuff I know, where I see someone. behavior and I'm like, oh, that's where he gets it from. And I'm like, fuck, that's where I get it from because he tells me about his dad. Yeah. Um, And and there's just there's cycles between parents. And, you know, they always say our, they inherit the worst of us, you know, parents talking about their kids. Mm. Um, but uh, it is just like a real time case study closest thing i'm gonna see to who i am at least biologically gonna be in the future i like where my dna is from both of my parents yeah you know um but i live a very much different life than they did at my age same right yeah we're both living well sometimes i also think my parents lived lives so that i could have this life like yeah my mom constantly would push me to do exactly what i wanted and i know it's because she couldn't do what she wanted a lot of times Mm mm-hmm and it's like she had to go through that so I could get to where I am. And it's really fascinating because I feel almost the sense of guilt that she, you know, was put in a box. Like she was living in New York City and ran out of money and her parents were like, you got to leave. And I am like just scraping to make it by. But I know that if I were to get to a point where I get stuck, she would do whatever she could to help me stay here and follow my dreams. Whereas she was like, ah, you're shit out of luck. You got to go back to Baltimore. And she did. And that's how her life went the way it did. And I think she's very happy with her life and she's a very happy person. But it's fascinating to see the sacrifices she had to make that I don't have to make because of what she did. Yeah, it's... uh I I think when I was growing up, I had a lot of anger toward my mother. And then it wasn't until I got older where I realized, oh, she was doing those things to protect and provide. And mm-hmm. things would have gone a lot differently had she done what I wanted her to do. Um, and when you get older and you become a person that's making their way into the world, I think the first couple of people you reach back to when times get tough uh, that you think about at least are your parents the are the ones that helped you get to where you had to go because then you really start thinking like when you're on the other side of something really fucked that happened to you like maybe you're short on rent or you don't have money for groceries or whatever the fuck you think about like damn it's just me doing this imagine my parents doing this for kids yeah and wow they really did that for me they really made these sacrifices for me or whoever, whoever raised you, you know, your, your right. parents, your guardian, your and they probably uncle hide who loved to wrestle as much as they can, too, so that you don't feel it. I think about that all the time, too. Like I was not as I could never be as strong as my mom was holding shit in. She probably still holds a lot of shit in. It's going to be funny when I find out I'm not their biological son. You think I'm going to have to retract all of my Netflix specials? <laughs> And apolo- I'm going to have to go on a world tour apologizing to Dominicans and lesbians everywhere. <laughs> no more combined conventions. Like this week, I got to go to the Bronx. Next week, I got to go down to Chelsea. <laughs> Separately. You uh-huh. can't combine them all into one. But shout out moms. Shout out moms. Shout out Tori's mom. I love you, mom. Thank you for uh, making the sacrifice. And shout out your mom. Shout out, mom. Thank you for smoking when you were pregnant with me. Made Look me at really him. cool. Look at him. I'm completely fine. <laughs> uh, my dad did not smoke when my mom was pregnant with me. But she did? Yeah. I mean, my dad's not a hero. <laughs> he he should have smoked smoke? too to support his wife. I always think about that, how women have to do so many things. Like, we can't have sushi. 
Really? Deli meat. Really? Alcohol. Okay. Um, well, smoke. You can have some alcohol if your baby's cold. There's a lot of, there's like a crazy list of things you can't consume or do. Listen to and no I, heavy jazz. If I was sitting across from a guy eating my favorite sushi, drinking my favorite drink, I'd just be like, <laughs> want another cigar, babe? <laughs> oh, right. You can't. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. What are you going to do? Abort it? <laughs> You already told your parents. They built us a nursery. Nurse, another fleet of sushi and another six shots for me. Anyways. And ice water for the woman <laughs> carrying my child. Oh, no, 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 no. It is just crazy. It's like this is just yeah, as your rough. kid as it is mine and I have to do all of this. Yeah. That's so unfair. <laughs> well, listen, we had to put it inside of you. No one ever gives us credit for that. You enjoy that part. Uh, not if you wouldn't <laughs> stop nagging me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't enjoy the next 18 years that comes with it. So let me enjoy this little part I'm going to have a good time with. That's fair. You have to make all the money. Let me have a little bit of fun before I have kid. to hear you bitch for nine months about how you can't eat your favorite sushi. <laughs> I have to feel bad every time I have a little drinky poo. Oh, because you're carrying my child? That's your kid, too. It's not your name on the oven. All I did was give you the ingredients. You're the one that decided to keep it. So I'm going to have a little fun. The ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a pro-abortion podcast. Um, you de- you sh- you, would you have a celebrity kid with Channing Tatum if he yes. was like, hey, I got... S- wow. <laughs> Obviously. If he was like, I'm going to leave my wife... And, uh, no, I wouldn't want there to be drama around it. Why? Because then the kid's born into chaos, and then it sticks with it, and I'd be stressed. It's like, hey, sorry, I'm having a drink. I just, I, I really had to go through this divorce today. Anyway, I know you're pregnant, but I'm gonna have another round of sushi <laughs> for Channing. You Magic Mike Hungy. Nom, 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 There's nom, a nom, third nom. one. I gotta watch that. I'm excited. I know. I see the trailer every time I go. It's, it's so not gonna be good, but I'm gonna watch the first one. I saw. First one's good. great. Second one's good. I didn't see Third. The second one. We'll see. I saw Infinity Pool. That was a great movie. It's called Infinity Pool? Infinity Pool with Mia Goth. Oh, you love her. I oh, love this is the one you showed me? Mia Goth. Yeah, I showed you the trailer for that one. Mm. And you got scared at the it would trailer. It scared me. So I said no. She was like, I haven't seen They're not like a single ratatouille. <laughs> if it was called Retinity Pool, I would see oh, it. Oh, that's what I was going to do in my blog. I was going to write about ratatouille. Because oh, well. you just went to Florida, you're gonna call it travel. I was gonna tour. wrap it into my overarching theme of of like f- and you can get inspiration from anywhere because the whole thing in Ratatouille is anyone can cook, and I thought that this weekend was such a beautiful reminder of like, you know, love can come from any place, no matter what, and that. Anyways, yeah, yeah let's class it, it up on the podcast. R- here. Okay. Save it for the next blog. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to have such. You're right. I'm gonna lock it up. <laughs> um. Well, I think this was a good first yeah, one back. It was, I think. Is there any uh, final words? Thanks for listening. Thank uh, you. It means a lot. More road dates coming up. Uh, thank you for thank you again, St. Pete, for the love. Thank, thank you. you for uh, letting us back into your ears. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but bonding is back now. We'll be back next week with a guest. I don't know who the hell it's going to be, but they will not talk about... Uh, um, transgender people well they can if they want to as long as they're pro right we'll see you next time seattle bye my name is dr fraser crane i'm no longer listening